According to the principles of natural selection, animals best adapted to survive in their environment are more likely to produce offspring, causing the beneficial adaptation to spread throughout the population. Each succeeding generation should be better adapted than the previous one. So, after millions of years of evolution, we might expect animals to be perfectly suited to their environments. Take horses, for example. While they will bite or kick a predator if cornered, they mainly rely on their speed to escape being brunch. Although hooves are very useful for fleeing across the plains, wheels are faster and more efficient. So why don't horses have wheels? <laughs> wheels are a complex change. They have to be round. They have to have axles and so on. So even if a wheel mutation occurred, it would be unlikely to happen in one step. <laughs> but complex changes can occur through an accumulation of smaller changes that accrue over generations, rather than in a single mutation. This kind of cumulative natural selection can design anything, no matter how complex, provided there is a possible sequence of many small steps leading up to the complete complex design. For example, Woodpeckers' long beaks are great for fishing insects from tree bark. It's easy to picture a bird with a short beak having offspring with slightly longer beaks that were able to gather a few more insects. I am more successful at gathering food than those with shorter beaks and therefore have a survival advantage. My long beaked mutation would likely spread throughout the population. Repeat this cycle again and again and the end result would be the modern woodpecker. Unlike long-beaked woodpeckers, however, wheeled horses seem unlikely to have developed through a series of smaller mutations because the intermediate steps required, axles without wheels, not quite round wheels, wheels that wouldn't turn, would be detrimental to survival. Natural selection eliminates organisms with harmful mutations, but it is not the only force driving evolution. Neutral mutations, changes that have no effect on an organism's ability to survive, can still persist due to luck. And some features are actually byproducts of other adaptations. The white color of our bones, for instance, is not an adaptation. It has no purpose. But it is the byproduct of the fact that our bones are made from calcium. Beneficial mutations are quite rare. When you have a complex design, there are more ways to make it worse than there are to make it better. Take a clock, for example. You might try to make one cog larger or smaller, or make a spring stronger. But since the clock is already pretty well designed, you'll probably foul it up. But even if horses don't have wheels, nature is full of examples of animal adaptations just as extraordinary. In addition to spiny armor, Hedgehogs have a circular skin muscle that contracts to form a bag for us to hide in. Alligators have three eyelids. One works sideways and is transparent so that we can see underwater. We can also swallow food underwater too, thanks to a special flap of skin at the back of our throat. If being a mammal with a duck-shaped bill isn't strange enough for you, Consider that platypus males have spurs on their hind feet that deliver poisonous venom along with a swift kick. Crikey! And what about camels? We can store fat in our humps to survive long periods without food. We can even metabolize fat to make water. The theory of natural selection shows that none of these incredible adaptations occurred overnight. Look at me. It takes many tiny changes over millennia to make a camel. Evolutionary theory takes into account the beauty and mystery of nature's design. So no one can say with certainty that millennia from now, pigs won't have wings or horses won't have wheels.